So what have I got for you today? Well, I've got the Tessman Smart Digital Multimeter, the TM510. And we're going to compare that with my AOKO -O T28B multimeter. And this one I found to be very, very accurate. And it's my go-to multimeter. Well, the Tessman only costs £14.99. Currently with its 6% discount. Or the recommended retail price of £15.93. So it's cheap as chips. But is it worth it? Well, I suppose at 15 quid, you can't really get that wrong, but you can, can't you? Because at the end of the day, you need a multimeter that's going to work, don't you? It's no good to have a multimeter if it isn't going to work, is it? It's no good if it's, if, you know, if it's inaccurate. No. It's no good if the continuity don't work or the homage and what have you. It's, it's pointless. So, what we're going to do is we're going to test that one against this one. Now, here it is. Unveiling the Testman Automatic Multimeter. Now, this particular multimeter, just like this one, has a uh, well, non-contact voltage as well. Yeah, you know, just like you just basically place it up against something and it'll beep. And you'll know if the socket is live or cable is live. It's, it's quite a useful facility. Do you trust it 100%? Well, it's the first point of call. Well, we'll test that as well. So, what do you get with your Testman uh, Smart Digital Multimeter? Well, you get the box, you get a nice little case, and you get the cables, like so. And they're quite nice cables. They're not a stiff, horrible, plasticky ones. They've got a nice flexibility to them. Um, they've got the typical kind of uh, probes on the end here. Um, they're, they're, they're quite protracted there. They come out from about 15 millimetres from the end of the actual insulated handles. Whereas on this one, as you can see, it's far more substantial. But yeah, again, this has a much more substantial price tag attached. That, remember, that's only 15 quid. We've got to bear that in mind. So it might be a bit of an unfair comparison. But if this gets anywhere near this one in its measurements, I think that one's a good buy. Yeah, it'll suit most people. And the fact it's automatic... Oh, it just makes life a breeze, it does. There's none of that faffing about, you know, twisting your knob. Yeah, you don't want to do that, do you? No. Anyway, so we've got our two probes here. And uh, in this case, for this one, like you said, it's got the shorter pins, and this one's got the longer pins. It came with the batteries, this test one, but also, they weren't any old batteries. They were actually Duracell batteries. Now, I remember when I first got this one, the batteries that came with this were crappy old Chinese things, and I wasn't certain even if they were alkaline, so I was concerned that they could leak. So I didn't put them in there. I put alkaline ones in instead that, you know, that I was confident with. Bear that in mind, whenever you get anything like this, where the batteries can be in it for a very long period of time, and they could potentially leak, put some alkaline batteries in. Something that, you know, that isn't going to leak and damage all the connections inside with acid. Yes, so don't do that. Anyway, so no further ado, we're going to test this against some voltage, but also some resistance as well. So, Shoshi, what we do is we'll start with the voltage. Uh, we're going to be using my camera battery for my Lumex uh, G7 camera. So, I know this should be, according to this, uh, about 8 volts, I think it is. Uh, well, it's saying it's 7.2 volts, but it's over that. It's, I'm pretty certain it's in the 8 volt range. So... We'll start with this one here, and we'll, we'll, we'll measure the actual voltage of the battery. And as you can see, I'm going to put it on to voltage. It's on voltage now. So let's place that on there like so. And it's saying 8.11 volts. Now, we're going to hold that. So we'll, it's hold. So 8.11. So how about the Tesman? Tesman multimeter. What voltage will it tell us? Is it going to be anywhere near this one? Because I know this is pretty darn accurate. 8.15. That, that's, that's, that's near enough. That really is when you're dealing with voltages. Yeah. Uh, I'd be happy at that. I don't see any problem there whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. It does react much slower, I must say, than the actual AOK Ozo, but does it really matter? No, it's quick enough, isn't it? So, yeah. So that is the voltage. I would say the voltage is pretty darn good. That's DC volts. 
Okay. Now, what about resistance? Well, resistance is pretty much if you've got something in the way of two contacts coming together. So if you have these two prongs coming together, like so these two probes, they come together, and if there's nothing in between, there's zero resistance. So if I place them together like so, zero resistance. As you can see. Now, the same should apply for this one, but with this meter here, the A-O-K-O-Z-O, <laughs> I like saying that, <laughs> I put the, have the twist that round says onto ohmage it's to measure resistance. Now, it's looking for something. So what we're going to do is we'll place these together like so. There you go. Saying a little tiny, tiny whisper of resistance. Oh, point 0.1. Oh, look, we're there. We're there. There's zero resistance. But what if we put some resistance in the way? Mm -hmm. Like a resistor. Now, we could use this potentiometer or potentiometer. Or we're going to use this little um, 1K uh, or 1 kilo ohm resistor. I've got these two uh, cables attached with little crocodile clips. So all we've got to do is connect... The test. Uh, so we'll start with the AK. Uh, this one here. So it's on. It's on homage still. So we're going to place that onto there like so, and that one onto there like so. Ooh, there you go. There you go. So you've got to be careful when you do this because you've got to make sure your connections aren't touching anything else. If there's anything, if it actually touches anything, even though it's not in the circuit, potentially that could affect it. Now, if for instance I connected both of these two meters up to these two same um, crocodile clips at the same time, you would get an inaccurate reading. That I promise you. Okay. So at the moment it's saying it's just over uh, a kilohome, fractionally over a kilohome. Well, that's going to fluctuate anyway, resistance does. So I won't be too worried at that. So that's narrows down. So the Tessman um, multimeter, is that oh, anywhere near that? Okay. As long as it's, you know, it doesn't, that those ones there don't start, start going up, I'll be happy. All right, let's have a look. So we'll place that one onto uh, that one. I'm a woodworker, so excuse my hands, I keep cutting them. <laughs> Got a bit of super glue on that one, holding that one together. Yeah, that's what happens when you're in woodwork. You can see if you hold your fingers together and super glue. So that one's going on there, and that one's going to go on there. And that is... Oh, hang on, that's the wrong meter. So, oh, oh, that's, oh, that one, okay? <laughs> now, we'll place that on there now, and now it should be doing its reading. Got to make sure everything is connected so it's not creating any resistance. Jumping about because it can't, it's got a bad connection. Still got a bad connection, saying it's got more resistance than it has. It might settle down. These ones here. Now it's jumping about because it's not got a very good connection on these connectors. That's probably because the resistor is actually tarnished. Well, there you go. That, that is pretty much... Well, that's near as damn it. If you remember, that one was uh, 1004. And this one's saying 1009. 08. 07. <laughs> is it going down or up? Could go down that's not far off the mark, is it? Now, I, I think most people would be happy with that one. Zero six. Okay. It's a little bit of five. That's going to break it. It's because of the bad connections, you see. And, um, you know, humidity and God knows what else. So, I'm quite happy that that one gives me a very similar reading to that one. So, so far, so good. Oh, well, it's the same now. It's still, oh, no, five. <laughs> so, that, that's, that's pretty darn good, I would say. Especially on resistance, because that can fluctuate all over the place. So, what about the other features of this meter? So, let's remove these prongs. 
Here are the probes. Take them out of the way. Oh, that's a good probe. There you go. We have our test with me at there. So what other features does it have? Obviously, we know it's got the ohmage. It's got uh, it's got the um, AC voltage. It's also got uh, DC voltage and, con you know, and continuity. So you've got to make sure your, your circuit is complete. And resistance because of the ohmage. You know, it doesn't have all the features of this one. But another feature it has, which is quite useful, we bring this charger down here. And the only reason I'm bringing this down here is I want the actual uh, the, the electricity that's in it, so to speak, if you know what I mean. Because this has a feature, quite an interesting feature. Um, and you can buy, oh, I've had Robin ones and uh, oh, various brands of, of probes and what have you, um, AC voltage detectors, but this also has an AC voltage detector built in. It's just pretty darn clever. So all you've got to do is press that button down there, hold that down, and it'll go into AC uh, voltage. I don't know what that means, AQ, what that is. Anyway, so now if I put that near something that has electricity in it, such as this charger, as in, when I say electricity, I mean mains electricity from 110 um, volts. I'm not sure what the range is, actually. I haven't checked what the range is. But we've currently got 230 volts here in this cable. But if you, that would also be like one, if you're in the US, US for instance, there'd be 110 volts, wouldn't it? So a lot of these things work from, have a range from around 12 volts upwards, which would be interesting. But they won't work on this one, I think. No. That one there. No. So it has this non contact voltage detector, which is a very useful thing to have. Because if you want, like for instance, you've got a. Uh, a radial circuit of sockets or lighting and you're trying to work out whereabouts uh, the power is lost. You've got a socket doesn't work and you're trying to work out where the power um, stops. So so if, say for instance you know you might have a socket not working and then you find there's another socket not working because I've used this and you know that somewhere between that socket and the socket that is working that there is a problem if there's no power, if there's nothing there whatsoever. It's a good way of locating the problem in the actual, uh, your in the house itself, or, or even in you know a garage or industrial building, or whatever. So it's a good way of um, isolating a problem. So it's a good tool so far. So far. Now the only thing I would say about the uh, non-contact voltage um, testers like this is that. I would never ever consider them a hundred percent accurate. Okay, although I've never ever had a problem with one to give me a false reading, I haven't, unless the batteries are, are, are too low. And if the battery's low, you can get a false reading. I'm not sure about this one because I haven't tested it for that with, with low batteries yet. But you could give you a false sense of security. So once you've got it isolated, before you start touching wires and stuff, make sure you use the actual probes themselves and stick them into the plus and you know the plus or minus or the positive and the negative of the, you know, behind the socket and double check that they are live or they're not. Otherwise, you might get a little bit of a belt. <clears throat> yeah, that'll ruin your Sunday roast. Anyway, so that works. I'm, I'm quite impressed with that. So we take it out of that mode by holding it down. I believe I go back into auto mode and there's something else that this little meter has it might be a little gimmicky but not really not if you think you could be working in a consumer unit and and it's a bit dark or you drop something you can't find it because it's dark in there but it also has a little torch on it see that is actually surprisingly useful it might seem a bit gimmicky but it's not it's actually a useful thing to have I don't know if this one's actually got it. No, it hasn't. You know, it's got a, a no no contact voltage. Actually, no, it might do. I don't know what that is. That might be one. Oh, it does have a torch. I didn't even know. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I need to turn it off, though. Oh, it just press it once. Okay, so, yeah, it has a torch as well. Did you press it once or you hold it down? You hold it down. So there you go. That is the testman. Multimeter, smart digital multimeter. Oh, I actually really like it. I think that's the ideal thing to have in your toolkit. You know, this thing's a bit bulky to cart about, unless you're, you know, an, uh, a pro and what have you. 
Yeah, but then obviously you're going to want something like this. But even that, even if you are a pro, to have something like this, which is compact, easy to have in your tool belt and what have you, you can, you know, go from place to place to place with that quite easy. But this thing's a bit, you know, a bit chunky. Yeah. Yeah, you do all that in your pocket, people. people, people what's, what's going on with you? So, okay. So let's go over what you get. You obviously get your box, like so. You get a case, like so. You get your cables. Are these ones here like so you don't get the comic buckets but you get those you also get a manual which all fits in well does that fit in there or not i don't know if it does actually that'd be quite useful if the manual actually fit inside there or does it let's have a look because that would be a bonus oh no that's not fitting there is it that is that's what or did it fit in that one that side maybe because if you're new to using a multimeter it would be very very useful to actually be able to take the manual round with it. it squeezes in there but it's not ideal it's not ideal i think the manual i think that's a i think that's a flaw it might be a tiny flaw but for those who are new to using multimeters that have an accessible manual nearby it would be a good idea what you could do is for, um photograph and print off one of the pages or even have it on your mobile phone or something just so you can have um the the, the instructions available if you come unstuck and obviously then you'd only carry around the instructions for the language that you require you're not going to need all that because you see there they're all different languages and what languages do we have we have english deutsch so it's german francais so it's french italiano so you've got italian and spaniel it's got spanish so you're not necessarily going to need all those languages are you so anyway uh anything else with that uh you, you got the, so what you get your batteries you get the meter you get the probes, a case, and a cardboard box. All right, all for the princely sum of fourteen ninety nine with the uh, six percent discount. Do I recommend it? Well, I'd like to have a little bit more practice with it, practice. I mean, experience with this particular market maker, and see if I come up with any kind of um, problems with it. But so far, I'm actually quite impressed, Ashley. For the money, it's a nice thing, and it's um seems well made, and to have such a, a comprehensive automatic settings, and you've got this nice little uh, dial here that tells you where you are, what have you at the moment. It's looking for a signal. Yeah, I actually like it. I do, and the fact that it actually gave me readings very similar to my AK KO <laughs> ZO T twenty eight V um. It's quite impressive especially for that price so anyway i'll leave a link in the description if you are interested in buying one it will be an amazon link which is an affiliate link so we would get a little tiny uh commission off amazon um if you do decide to buy one which is quite nice because obviously you know put that effort into putting these videos together um but like i said this is a sponsored video but no money has exchanged hands from testman tools Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little video. Anyway, if you did, please uh, click like, or, you know, boot the old like button and uh, subscribe to the channel. And maybe that little bell icon, because then you'll get a warm, fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. Anyway, over and out.